Hi guys and welcome back to the Backstage Bikini Podcast. This is now episode three and as you'll have noticed it's just my voice, it's just Jade. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today just to give a little bit of an introduction really and an insight into my individual journey. Um, Grace and I thought it would be a really good thing to do just to introduce ourselves properly um, so that you know who is on the other end of this podcast, who you're, sp- well, who you're hearing, you're not necessarily speaking to, although you could be speaking back at me right now. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a quick little solo cast really to introduce ourselves and um, explain where we're up to in our journeys in, in the hope that you'll be able to relate to it somewhat. Um, so I will not try, well, I'll try not to bore you um, in terms of my competing background. And I know I've done a brief overview in our introduction episode as well. Um, But just to give you an insight, really, I have been competing since 2019. Uh, My first ever show was the Heart of England natural show at UKDFBA. um, That was in rugby. And that was the first time I'd ever competed. Um, It was my first exposure as an athlete. I was certainly not ready for what prep would bring at all. Certainly wasn't prepared. I was definitely sort of hooked in with the the glitz and the glamour of everything that you see on Instagram and the cruel reality of what it actually takes, especially with somebody who hasn't done an off season, which is something I'm going to get at in a minute, um, is the brutality of it certainly hit home. All that being said, absolutely fell in love with it. I took a little bit of time away from stage where obviously we were all in the UK and around the world, we were plunged into lockdown in, at the start of 2020. So I took that time really away from stage um, to try and grow a little bit. Um, it wasn't very uh, successful, I might add, but still we'll get back to that. Um, and I competed again in 2021. So that was in the middle of the year, and that was my first ever two bro show, which was absolutely amazing for a multitude of reasons. Um, the the main one really being it it certainly taught me a lot about about this sport and what was necessary in order to be successful and what was truly necessary, what not what it looks to be or what is perceived to be success on the outside and through Instagram, but really what kind of work it would take for me to actually become any sort of name in this sport at all. So I am still at an amateur level, very much so, with aspirations as we all have to reach the pro ranks. Um, But my most recent competitive season was this season. So I competed in the in a tubo show at the end of may um extreme nutrition games i want to say i could be wrong actually i could have forgotten my own show um and then shortly after i competed in alicante um at the amateur olympia which was for anybody who hasn't competed abroad and would like to compete abroad the shows out in alicante are absolutely phenomenal um and the the spectacle that they put on and the show that they put on and the experience from start to finish, I would highly recommend just as an experience more than anything. But that's basically my competing background in a nutshell. I'm not going to bore you with with that too much, um, but I am going to talk a little bit about where I am at the minute. Um, so in terms of my current position, obviously I reversed out of show. So my most recent show was uh, the first weekend of June. So we reversed out, obviously, from that point. Having competed in two shows, it was pretty obvious that I needed um, to grow still. I have some lagging areas and things like that. Glutes and bikini girls cannot be lagging in the glute area. So there's, there's, there's certain things that I knew that I had to improve on. So we reversed out. Um, that has not gone to plan in the slightest. And anybody who follows me on Instagram or on social media will probably have seen me um, sort of reference it in my posts and things like that over the last couple of months. Um, But that hasn't gone to plan and not in your atypical um, sort of circumstances that you'd expect. So typically whenever somebody talks about an an off season or a reverse not going to plan, it's usually rooted around food, right? So we've lost control a little bit or we've gained a little bit more body fat than we'd like to or things have just sort of tumbled down a hill and progressively got worse and and the difficulty then 
knock on effect is something that we're hoping to cover in the podcast as well in the future is obviously the the female physiology or just your physiology in general and the impacts of not taking that that time to reverse out of show properly safely in in a controlled fashion or as controlled as as we can we can do it like episode two touched on so that for me didn't look necessarily like a loss of control in terms of food um, or adherence or anything like that. But my adherence was impacted by life events. So five weeks out, I think it was, so five weeks post-show, um, there was a sort of ex- big life event. I lost my grandfather um, or granddad. I've never called him grandfather. <laughs> um, so I lost my granddad at that point. And we obviously we have a plan. So, and we touched on it in episode two, you have a plan when you're reversing out. And I think it's really important to have a structured plan when you are reversing out of a show, especially if you are a new competitor. It's a really difficult one to navigate without any kind of structure or any kind of um, clear picture on what you're supposed to be doing, because as we've touched on, it is so regimented. Everything about prep and everything about that lead up to your show is structured. You know exactly where you are from A to A to B. You know where you are in your day. You've got tick boxes to tick throughout the day. So losing that, I think, is has a really big impact on people um, and it has done on me as an athlete before. So I am not dismissing the need for a plan here. Let me be clear on that. A plan coming out of a show is really, really useful. However, mine didn't go to plan at all. Um, purely because, like I say, I had life events. I lost my granddad. And for 10, 11 days on the trot, I didn't eat my meals. I was just eating quick, snacky food, essentially things that I could access in a hospital. I was sleeping on a plastic chair for days and not to play the tiniest violin in the world, but I, I just couldn't, I couldn't train. I couldn't walk. I couldn't get the steps in. I couldn't do the usual things that would have structured my day in a usual fashion because I had to be somewhere else. Um, And psychologically at the time, obviously where I was at the time was very important to me and my family needed me and I needed to be there as well for my own well-being. Uh, But psychologically, the fallout from that was extremely difficult. And again, we I'll reference the second episode that we did with Paul quite a lot because the psychology of not being able to adhere to the plan was extremely difficult. So as a result, obviously, I, I struggled that little bit more post-show with with everything, with the psychology, with gaining weight, with um, the repercussions of me having that, that break away from my usual routine. Not long after that, my mum got really poorly as well. So again, there was another clear break in my routine, things where things that I couldn't control ultimately. Um, and that affected greatly the my ability to adhere to this plan. So to get in the gym, and you're talking really simple things like turn up and actually do your session. I wasn't able to do that. I wasn't training out of my usual gym. I was training out of a gym close to home, which I'm quite fortunate. And that is still a really uh, great gym. If ever, if anybody has ever been to Evolution Gym in Rochdale, would recommend it if you're ever that way, because it is a great uh, gym. It's well equipped and the staff in there are really cool as well. Um, but it was just the the plan didn't go to plan. Right. And I think the thing that I have shocked myself with most now is the decision that myself and Meg, my coach, made recently. Um, And that is to basically scrap the plan. (laughs) So it's not scrapped like in in the sense that we're not we're not following a, a meal plan anymore. But that structure that was in place for me to reverse out of show is now fluid it's no longer a structure it's no longer a week to week day by day indication of where we're up to and where we should be mini cutting maintaining pushing and things like that all of that now is fluid because because of circumstances outside of my control over the last couple of months the plan hasn't gone to plan and as much as i struggled with that at the time i have found a strange amount of peace in knowing that the stage is always going to be there and hands up how many people have heard somebody say that like it's almost like we move we move like it's a phrase that people throw around quite um willingly 
and quite willfully, but it is a difficult thing to get your head around sometimes um, because ultimately we are competitive athletes and we like to be on stage and we like to be competing. We like to be progressing. Otherwise we wouldn't be in this sport. This sport is very internal and you as a person are driven, you're motivated to succeed, to improve, to better yourself. Otherwise you wouldn't be doing this. So the idea of not reaching a certain milestone or not reaching a certain goal is difficult and I did really struggle with it at the time um and I tortured myself and when I mean I tortured myself I was crying <laughs> um quite honestly I was crying in bed because I I wasn't able to do the things that mattered to me but equally the torment of knowing that I had to be somewhere else that mattered to me more and sort of comprehending that um on on the reverse of a a six month diet dieting phase and a competition prep as well, telling myself and reminding myself that I'm a human being and not this athlete anymore. I need to be a human and, a, and not an athlete. Um, so that bit was really difficult. So ultimately myself and Meg have, like I say, scrapped for want of a better phrase, the original plan. And that means that I might not be stepping on stage next year. Now I did an Instagram post about this recently and I think it's a really important point that a lot of people, again, like I say, talk about, but the internalization and understanding or getting your head around the reality of it can be somewhat more problematic, probably because of the the exposure that the sport has now, because it's on social media. Everybody knows your every move, especially if you're willing to freely sort of post it and keep people updated. Um, so it, there's almost a obligation to explain your reasonings for not stepping on stage or for pulling out of a prep or for uh, not being able to see a show through or two shows or three shows through because of health reasons or whatever crops up. Um, ultimately, that obligation doesn't exist. It doesn't. And I think what's really important for anybody who's listening, and it's a conversation I've had with, with myself recently, is that this sport and your participation in it whilst it affects other people around you, you do it for you, right? And I do it for me. This is this is my time. This is my time in the gym is my time. Um, committing myself to this sport and to a prep is something that I do for my own fulfillment and for my own gratification, I go as far as to say. Um, this is for me. And it is a selfish reason why I do this sport. It's not for anybody else's benefit other than my own. So getting up on stage for me, having been on stage in 2021 and really, really not been ready for it. Like I showed up against athletes that were absolutely stunning, beautiful condition, beautiful bodies. And I showed up and I was 50%, if that. And knowing that feeling, knowing what it felt like to step off stage and not feel like I belonged is enough motivation for me now to make a decision based on the way that the last couple of months have unfolded and the progress that perhaps hasn't been made as a result of me having to be elsewhere, be a human as opposed to being an athlete. Um, I think having that sort of understanding and that feeling has made it quite easy for me to sort of pull the prep ultimately and say, I will prep when I'm ready to prep. I'll prep when I've made the the improvements that I want to make. I will prep when my body is ready and able to respond to the things that I'm asking of it. But equally, I understand and have felt the pressures before now um, of stepping on stage and, and almost feeling like fear of missing out, FOMO, whatever you want to call it, whether you don't feel relevant, whether you don't feel a part of the sport anymore because you're not embroiled in the prep process and sort of um, communicating your updates because let's face it, they're way more fun when you're lean as opposed to when you're fluffy in off-season. So it can cause a bit of a disconnect to the sport. And I think the message really that I want to sort of convey in this podcast and a, a sort of feeling and a conversation that I've very much had with myself at the minute is that ultimately you do this for you and if you are not able to commit 100% to this if your glass is half empty if your tank is low you're not going to be able to commit 
yourself to this process. And as a result, you're going to be less than 100% on show day as well. And I think what's important to remember is, is not to be fearful of taking that time away from stage. Like everybody says it, but the stage is going nowhere. <laughs> if anything, they're getting bigger. They're getting more popular. They're getting more frequent. There is going to be more show time and more show exposure um, in in years to come, more than there ever has been. This this sport has grown so much over the last couple of years, let alone uh, sort of within an acute period of time, or a longer period of time, rather. So it's always going to be there. What won't be there is the stage if you absolutely batter your body to the point where you can't recover, you can't ask of it what would be required to do another prep if you continually force your body and your mind as well through difficult periods of your life or a bad I'm going to say no I'm going to rephrase that a less than optimal reverse because there is no bad reverse but it can be less optimal it can be negative or negative for you if you experience certain circumstances or uh, certain struggles so I think the drill home message that I am essentially having a chat with myself as well um is to not be afraid to take that time away from stage don't don't be afraid of it i think as i say there's a misconception um or a, a fear of missing out more than anything people are people know that they can take time away from stage they know that their life won't stop um life will continue and no doubt you will have just as many hurdles as you would do through a prep in that period but ultimately you want to be positioning yourself in the best possible position <laughs> I'm saying position twice um you want to position yourself for success and that for me has been a conversation that I've had with Meg this week and with myself because I don't want to show up the same and this sport is bodybuilding it is the it's in the title says it on the tin it's it's about building and if you're not building from season to season if you're not building on what you've already achieved then you are not fulfilling your potential you're not pushing yourself to that next level and you could be happy doing that 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 could be what you want to do and that is absolutely fine but 99% of the people that I've come into contact with in this sport would not be satisfied with showing up the same and I I'm certainly not one of those people. So, yeah, that's just an update from me <laughs> with a big lesson <laughs> attached to it about taking time away from stage. But I just wanted to hash it out, really, and have a chat about it, hoping that it will relate to somebody in terms of the sort of disconnect and the conversation you have to have with yourself and the reassurances that you have to sort of tell yourself that it's okay to be away from stage it's 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 not the end of the world you are still an athlete in off season if anything you are more of an athlete you are more capable both in energy physiology you you can function you can train well and with intensity and you can socialize and be a person like you are probably more of an athlete in an off season than you ever will be in a prep you just look shiny and tanned and lost and you've got abs and it looks amazing but ultimately your potential is found in your off season um and I think the emphasis now more than ever for us ladies needs to be put on that off season and to not be afraid of it we are women we are not supposed to be skin and bone <laughs> and muscle we're not supposed to be lean we're not designed to be that way there's so many repercussions for us as females as a result of pushing our bodies to that extreme. So remembering to be kind to yourself, remembering to take that time away to honor your body and give back for what it's sacrificed to get you on stage in the first place is very, very important. And if your post-show does not go to plan in the sense or in the same way as I've explained Today, remember that the plan can be changed. It can be, and it takes communication. And I was a bit of a bugger. I didn't communicate in the first instance with Meg. I held off and just tried to get on with it. Would not recommend because ultimately your body is a system and it can only take so much. Um, and eventually it's going to tell you that it's it's overrun and it can't do what you're asking it to do, which is exactly what mine did, which... Thankfully for me, spoke to Meg and Meg recognised that and 
we were straight back out. But yeah, don't be afraid of changing the plaid is essentially the point of this podcast. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, thank you for listening to me, Waffle. I hope somebody's got some value from this. I wanted to keep it short and snappy. It's just supposed to be a basic sort of who we are, where we're up to and what is going to, where, well, what our reality looks like right now. So I'm hoping I've given you that kind of overview. Um, but of course, if anybody ever has any questions, our DMs are always open. You can follow the podcast at the Backstage Bikini Podcast on Instagram, or you can get myself and Grace's handles as well. I am at Jade Lee Hegarty, and Grace is at Grace Mannion underscore. Um, but of course, if you ever have any topics or anything that you'd like us to cover, let us know. But I hope this has been useful. And the next podcast you will hear, hopefully, might be Grace, might be somebody else. You never know. But thank you for tuning in, guys. Be sure to share the podcast um, if you've listened to it. Let us know your feedback. We're absolutely adoring the feedback and the support that we've received so far. So thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.